Hey there folks, my name is Luke. Welcome to this episode of the Outdoor Gear Review where today I am talking about venomous snakes and snake bites. What to do and what not to do. Go ahead and get comfortable and let's get started. Now in a recent overnight adventure called the Valley of the Snakes, you all saw where I came this close from stepping on a rattlesnake. That is a timber rattlesnake that you're looking at there. Now this snake is extremely venomous, very dangerous. People die from the bite of this snake. Since the adventure had gone up, many have asked me what I would have personally have done if I had gotten bitten by that rattlesnake. Now, I am going to tell you all what I would have done and what you all should do and not do if you're in a similar situation and you get bit. Now let's pretend for a moment here that you are in this situation and you just got bit by the snake. First off, you wanna walk away from that snake, but you want to pay attention to the snake and its markings. You want to acquire as much information about that snake as safely possible. So you can present this information to the hospital, to the medical team who is going to treat you. And that is because different types of snakes require different types of anti-venom. So remember as much information as possible about the snake that bit you. Do not try to capture it, do not try to kill it. Now that you know what the snake looks like and you are a safe distance away from it, now it's time to sit down. Ah, feels good. That rain is going to cool things down. Okay, now that you're sitting down, it is a good time to apply some first aid to the bite, wherever that may be on your body. All that you want to do is simply put a bandage over the bite. You do not want to compress this area at all. That is the opposite of what you want to do. Covering up the wound is a good idea. After you got the bandage taken care of, it is time to call 911, if at all possible. If you can reach them, follow their directions. Something to keep in mind is that the circumstances involving a snake bite are going to be different in every single case. So depending on what the circumstances are will translate as to what you do. So let's say that you are with a friend and you are in an area where help can get to you. The best thing to do is to sit down with the affected limb below your heart. The next thing that you want to do is remove any tight fitting items such as your shoe if you got struck on the ankle, but let's say you got bit on the hand you would want to remove your wedding ring and so on. And that's because the affected area will begin to swell almost immediately. While you're sitting there and you're waiting for help to arrive, you might as well write on your skin the time that you got bit by that snake. Be as accurate as possible because this information will help the medical team who is treating you just in case you lose consciousness or become disoriented. So let's change up the scenario and let's go to the one that I recently faced on my adventure. I was out in the middle of nowhere, roughly 12 miles away from any sort of road, any sort of help. Now, luckily I had very good cell phone service so if I got bit I would have called 911 and I would have followed their instructions let's say that you got bit you're out in the middle of nowhere you do not have cell phone service you need to think about the last time that you did and you need to begin retracing your steps you need to backtrack you need to make your way back to a point where you can make contact either by phone or in person you need to get help as soon as possible. If you have to hike back to a point where you can have cell phone service or get help, you can eat and drink while doing so. Now, when you get bit by a snake, that is the most important aspect to keep in mind is that you need to get help as soon as possible. Do not delay, do not delay. The longer that the venom goes through your body and is untreated, the more damage that it will do. Already, I've mentioned many things that you should do and a few things that you shouldn't. Let's focus on the things that you should not do in any case. Never, ever, ever use a snake kit. They're absolutely worthless. They do more harm than good. There is no such thing as a good snake kit. If you have one, go ahead and throw it away. It is useless. Do not cut the bite. Do not compress the bite. Do not put ice on the bite because that can make it worse. Do not try to suck out the venom. You will not get the venom out of your body. The only treatment for a venomous snake bite is the anti-venom. That is it. Ultimately, your goal if you got bit by a venomous snake is to get help ASAP. The longer that that venom is coursing through your body, the more damage that it can do. In many cases, the venom will rot your flesh, it will break down muscle, and so on. In extreme cases, you can even lose the limb that was bitten. Another aspect of being bitten by a venomous snake is the cost. Anti-venom doses are extremely expensive. Recently, I heard a story of a man who got bit by a rattlesnake and it cost him $150,000 for his treatment. Over $80,000 for that was for anti-venom. Something to think about is that there is a risk in every single thing that you do. And it doesn't matter if you're on a hiking trail at the local park or you're out in the remote recesses of the Pisgah National Forest like I was. Things happen. Hopefully you're in a situation where you could get help either by making a phone call or asking for help from others, but you may not be so lucky. You may be out in the middle of nowhere and you have to hike your way out. Every situation is going to be different and you need to be prepared for that situation as a backpacker, as a hiker, as an outdoorsman or an outdoors woman. The good news when it comes to venomous snake bites is that very rarely do people die. It does happen, but it is on the rare side. That is true for people and it's also true for pets. Very rarely do pets actually die even when they get struck 
in the face. As mentioned before, the best possible course of action is prevention, so do your best. Watch where you're sticking your feet. Watch where you're sticking your hands. Talking about hands, this is where most snake bites occur, right here, right on the hand. With a non-venomous snake, the most typical symptoms are pain and scratchiness at the site. When it comes to a venomous snake, you're talking about severe burning at the site, usually within 15 to 30 minutes. Next, you have swelling, bruising, which can go all the way up the arm or leg. Other symptoms include nausea, weakness, odd taste in the mouth, and so on. In most cases, within 30 minutes, you will know if it was a venomous snake or not. No matter what, as soon as you get bit, go for help. That is the smart thing to do. Almost stepping on that rattlesnake was an eye-opening, scary experience. It is something that I've thought about since it happened. I was so far out in the middle of nowhere, in such a remote area. No matter what, if I had gotten bitten, I would have been in serious, serious trouble. There's no denying that. In no scenario would my evacuation been quick. Not at all. Of course, that is the risk that I take as a backpacker, as someone who likes to go solo on their adventures. In my opinion, the reward is worth the risk every single time. Bad things happen, that's life. And I will never allow fear to dictate what I do in my life. Trust me, folks, when you take the proper precautions, you pay attention, and you have common sense on your side, in most cases, you will be absolutely fine on the trail. So there you have it, everyone. Those are the do's and don'ts when it comes to venomous snake bites. If you have any questions for me, make sure to email me, and I will address those for you. Strength and honor. See you guys around.